the Jack Benny program. No, no, you listen to me. You're darn right I'm mad. This has been going on all night. I've had to get out of bed every ten minutes. Who was that? Another one of those cranks complaining about my rooster. <laughs> Hello, Bertie. <laughs> Boss, maybe the neighbors are right. You know, it's bad enough you're raising chickens in the backyard. But why did you have to buy that rooster? Rochester, I lied to you. You did? I didn't buy that rooster. Remember one night when you were away on your vacation, I came home one night kind of tired and hungry, and I went to the cupboard and I took out an egg. And as I sat there holding this leg in my hand... <laughs> trying to decide whether to fry it or scramble it. I fell asleep. When I woke up, I was a mother. There it goes again, Mama! You know, Rochester, that rooster might make a lot of noise, but it's pretty smart. You remember the day the man from the zoning commission came by? Mm-hmm. That rooster flew up on the roof and made believe he was a weather vane. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? All right, so it woke you up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I know this is Beverly Hills, but... But... Oh, yeah? <laughs> Come over here and say this, I'll punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Language from a woman. <laughs> Mr. Jack Benny? Yes, sir. Well, I have something for you. What is it? A summons. <laughs> The summons, what for? For that weather vane. It didn't fool me. <laughs> Fine neighbors I've got in Beverly Hills. Summons. Hmm. Oh, well. Just because my rooster makes a lot of noise, I gotta go and appear in court for disturbing the peace. Oh, well, I'll take care of this right away. Shut up and get off that roof. <laughs> He's gone already. <laughs> Stupid bird. The wind is coming from the east. He's facing north. <laughs> I'm going to see my... Oh, darn it, my lawyer went to New York. Well, there's another lawyer in that same building... I remember room two, three. Willoughby, his name is. I'll go to see him, Willoughby. Rochester, I'm going into town. <laughs> Mr. Willoughby? Yeah. You a lawyer? Yeah. <laughs> but every place I run into, you're either a waiter or a clerk or a floor walker. Now you're a lawyer? Well, I try to better myself. Why don't you? <laughs> Look, I didn't come here to be insulted. Are you going to handle my case or not? Well, that all depends. What's your trouble? Well, here it is, right here. There. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to look this up. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's a summon. <laughs> Summoned the test on top. What law school did you get your diploma from anyway? Oh, I didn't go to law school. I watched Perry Mason. <laughs> you know, he's never lost a case. I know, I know. Well, uh, let's see what this summons says. Yo, there's no trouble here. I can get you out of this just like that. Why? What are you gonna do? Well, we'll go into court and you'll plead insanity. <laughs> Insanity, but I'm not insane. I know it, and you know it, but we'll never get 12 jurors to agree on it. <laughs> now, look, will you stop all of that nonsense? How are you going to get me out of this? Now, I have to know. Well, it's very simple. I have lots of tricks. You don't have to worry. Now, when I go into court, I'll wear this. <laughs> and I'll read my notes off the back of an envelope. You're not going to read your notes off of anything. And you're not going to handle my case, either. I'm getting out of it. Yeah, I'm tired. Hmm. Imagine having to go to court. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> the next time you do that, I'll wring your neck. <laughs> Some rooster doesn't even know which way the wind is blowing. <laughs> and that crazy lawyer I went to see. Yeah. If I have to go to court, I'll get the best lawyer in town, believe me. <laughs> Should have killed that rooster a long time. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'm gonna get the best lawyer. Order in the court. Order in the courtroom. Uh, what's the next case? Case number 625, the state of California versus Jack Benny. Charge, murder. <laughs> Would you bring in the defendant, please? <laughs> Mr. Benny, do you have a statement for the press? Darn right, I got a statement. I'm innocent. Hear that? And my lawyer is going to prove it. Believe me, I got the best lawyer in town. The best lawyer? You're darn right. <laughs> May I have your autograph, please? I got a feeling I'm going to win this case. Uh, Your Honor, before we proceed, I'd like a moment to uh, confer with my client. Oh, certainly, certainly. Where is he? <laughs> Perry, I am right here. Number Perry. Yeah, I, Mr. Mason, I'm, I'm certainly glad you're going to defend me. Now, what is your line of strategy here? Well, Jack, I've been giving the case a lot of thought. I've been mulling it over and mulling it over. And you know, something important suddenly occurred to me. What's that? You haven't paid me my retainer yet. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. Now, let's see, you told me that would be uh, $100 in advance, didn't you? Yes. There you are, sir. Thank you, Jack. Of course, the rest of the fee depends on how long the trial continues. Yes, thank you. Remember, I get $1,000 a day. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. Jack! Jack, watch yourself. My reputation is at stake. This is the first time I ever defended the man charged with the murder of a rooster. No, but I didn't do it. Harry, I didn't do it. Order in the court. Now then, if there are no more interruptions, 
Perhaps we could proceed with this trial. Is the prosecuting attorney in the courtroom? <laughs> He's the prosecuting attorney? That nut! <laughs> we can't move! Is the defense ready to proceed? Ooh, are we? <laughs> And if the prosecution is ready, we can proceed with this trial. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as the witnesses proceed to the stand, we wish to remind you that our case is based not on rumor, not on hearsay, not on prejudice, but on sound rules of evidence. Never in the history of my courtroom experience have I ever seen such a clear-cut case of premeditated murder. <laughs> this crazy guy. Suddenly he's a brilliant attorney. <laughs> Why shouldn't he be? He learned everything he knows from watching me. <laughs> yeah, I know he told me. But I learned a few tricks from him, too. <laughs> prosecution will prove that on Wednesday last, this defendant did willfully, unlawfully, maliciously, with malice of forethought, murder a rooster. And we will demand the full penalty that the law allows, $25,000 or 10 years in jail. For killing a rooster? <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. Your Honor, my lawyer objects. He objects. My lawyer objects. Uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Mason. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, the prosecutor is in error when he states that the penalty for this offense is $25,000 or 10 years in jail. In point of fact, the penalty is life imprisonment <laughs> or death in the gas chamber. <laughs> Harry! Harry, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Jack, just remember, it isn't important whether you win or lose. <laughs> it's how you play the game. <laughs> what is this, a tennis match? <laughs> If it please the court, I should like to call my first witness. Very well. <laughs> that attorney is crazy after all. Imagine bringing in Don Wilson to testify against me. My friend. You know, sir, what is your name? Herman Hocklefinger. Hocklefinger? <laughs> That's Don Wilson. And what is your occupation? I'm a jockey. <laughs> He's lying. He's my announcer. That doesn't make sense, Jack. Why would you have a jockey for an announcer? <laughs> He's not a jockey. Look at the size of him. I tell you, that's Don Wilson. He's lying. Jack, I just can't believe he's lying. Well, let's find out. Your Honor, may I interrogate this witness first? Well, it's highly irregular, but uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, George. <laughs> Is your name Don Wilson? No. <laughs> You see? <laughs> and may I have the witness back, Your Honor? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. And now, Mr. Hockenfinger, will you tell the court in your own words exactly what you saw last Wednesday? Well, I live in a house right behind Mr. Bennett's. 
And I happened to be looking out my window, and I saw him in his backyard. And that's when I saw it, and it was terrible, terrible. Oh, uh, yes, well, it just tell the court exactly what you saw. Well, at first I thought he was just waving at me, and then I realized he was wringing that poor innocent rooster's neck. Boy, <laughs> he was ruthless, I tell you, just ruthless. Yo, witness. He's lying. Harry, I'll tell you, he's lying. Just watch this, Jack. <laughs> now, sir. You say you live directly behind Mr. Benny's house. That's right. His backyard is about 20 yards from my window. And you were looking out your window. That's right. And you say you saw Mr. Benny actually kill this rooster? Oh, he killed him, all right. He killed him. Oh, I tell you, it was just terrible. I saw it with my own eyes. Your Honor, here is an almanac. I placed this almanac in evidence. Last Wednesday night, there was no moon, no star. It was foggy. Visibility was zero. <laughs> now, Mr. Hockelfinger, how can you possibly say that you saw the defendant kill that rooster? It was two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Gee, I never thought of that. <laughs> no further questions. Barry, they're making a fool out of you. How do you always win your cases? I don't know. I watch you on television. You, you always win. Why? Maybe my writers are better than yours. <laughs> if it please the court, I should like to call the defendant to the stand. Well, it's about time. Uh, Jack, don't be nervous. Remember, I'm your lawyer. Don't remind me. Would you like my autograph? No. Now, Mr. Benny, as you know... Wait till I get up here. <laughs> you are accused of willful, premeditated murder of your rooster. I didn't do it. I didn't do it, I told you. Oh, you didn't, eh? Yeah. I charge that when you found that because of that bird you were going to be sued for thousands of dollars, that all that money was going to slip through your dirty little fingers... Objection, you... Your Honor. The prosecutor has no right to use the term dirty little fingers. I'm right, he has them. These are the same fingers that I play my violin with. Forget it. Leave dirty little fingers in the record. <laughs> and now, Mr. Benny, did you or did you not choke the life out of that poor, defenseless, helpless little owl? I did not. The autopsy shows your fingerprints deeply embedded in the bird. Objection, Your Honor. This argument is specious. How do we know he was choking it? Maybe he was just trying to squeeze out an egg. <laughs> From a rooster? <laughs> Objection overruled. <laughs> you mean I'm wrong again? So wrong, you can have your autograph back. <laughs> I can't understand it. Whenever I see him on television, he's always right. The other fellow's always wrong. Perry Mason is always right. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, the prosecution is not going to waste time asking you any further questions. The guilt is written on your face. You and you alone committed that murder. Your Honor, the evidence of guilt is so overwhelming in this case that the prosecution rests. If the defense wishes, he may question the witness and bring out his side of the case. No questions. <laughs> Mary, Mary, aren't you going to ask me anything? They're cutting me to ribbons. Why don't you help me? Because you wouldn't let me wear my Lincoln hat. <laughs> I'll cut that out. Look, at I paid you in advance. I paid for that lousy almanac. Defend me. 
Uh, all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this man's life is at stake. And worse than that, he might get fined, too. <laughs> I ask you to look at this man. Is that the face of a criminal? The face of a... face of a liar, perhaps. <laughs> face of a cheat, perhaps. <laughs> the face of an egomaniac, perhaps. <laughs> but a murderer? No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I tell you, in order to have committed this crime, a man would have to be out of his mind. It would have to be someone who was tortured by overwork, by, by lack of sleep, by a rooster crowing, crowing, night and day, day and night, driving him crazy, hour after hour, minute after minute, just crowing and crowing and crowing, and that's why I did it. The darn thing was driving me out of my mind. <laughs> Just crowing every minute, every hour, every day, every second. What else could I do, Your Honor? I throw myself on the mercy of the court. <laughs> Take him away. Mr. Benny, you are free to go. <laughs> accused, and you got me off. Yes, Jack. But I'm going to the gas chamber. <laughs> you know. But remember, it isn't whether you win or lose. <laughs> it's how you play the game. in just a moment, but first... Terry, you did it again. <laughs> you did it again, Terry. <laughs> oh, boy. What a dream. <laughs> well, good night, folks. This has been a J&M production. And this is Don Wilson saying goodnight.